everybody. My name is Marcos. Marcos Cassiano. And I'm here to tell you about my Tales from the Road. All of my adventures from uh, traveling the highways and byways across the U.S. With different bands. Uh, it was always a lot of fun. It was always a learning experience. And uh, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I had, I had a great time. <clears throat> Worked with some great people. And... Uh, this, this next little story comes about when, uh, like, like with all little bands and all little gigs that you do, you know, they, they phase out after a while. So you're constantly in, you know, looking for more work mode. On this particular occasion, I was looking for more work. The, this other little situation that I was working in, it, it phased out. So now I'm moving on to something else. But I think it was like around January, the middle of January, and it was a cold day. There was like snow on the ground. It doesn't snow that much in Tennessee, but we get a little bit of snow. And so I, I decided to go. I remember there was a, an agency, a booking agency, in Goodlettsville, not too far from where I lived, uh, Joe Taylor. And so I said, I'm, I'm going to go to see Joe Taylor. And I think I went to about two or three other places that day that weren't that far away. And so I, I go to Joe Taylor's office. I remember there was a lady working the front desk. I told her, who I was. I played drums and I was looking for work. And she gladly took my name because I think in those days the booking agents, they like to have a lot of names and numbers of musicians because, you know, bands break up or, you know, someone's looking for musicians that, you know, they can call the agent and say, hey, do you have any, anybody? So anyways, I gave the lady my name, my number. I get home and within the hour, a guy calls me and he is in, he's in Burlington, Iowa. But he has a gig in Gulfport, uh, Illinois, which is across the Mississippi River. Burlington and Gulfport, they're separated by the Mississippi, and you, you take a bridge ac across, of course. Well, anyways, he had some dealings with Joe Taylor, so he calls his booking agent and says, Hey, you know, I need a drummer, I need some musicians, so that's how I got the call. And man, I was like, wow, within an hour I've already got a gig. So the guy explains to me, you know, what, what he has. He basically had a house gig in Gulfport, Illinois, and uh, and he needed a drummer. And in the course of our conversation, he also mentions, hey, I need a guitar player and bass player. Do you know a guitar player and bass player? I go, yeah, I just got out of a situation with, with, uh, with another band, and guitar player and bass player, uh, I know them. They live right here in my apartment complex. Let me call you back and, and let you know what they say. Of course, they didn't have a phone, so I had to run over to the apartment, I talked to the guys. I don't remember how long I talked to them. And, and they seemed pretty ha happy. They were excited because this was not only just a gig, but it was going to be a house gig. So I called this guy Will back within the hour, and uh, we, we make the arrangements. And he says, you know, can you come up tomorrow? I believe this was like on a Wednesday. Uh, yeah, it was like on a Wednesday. And so the next day, <clears throat> the other guys and I, we load up my car. I had a station wagon. We put the guitar the bass and the amps in my car plus my drums and we, we truck it on up to Burlington, Iowa and you get to Burlington, Iowa and then you make a right turn go across the Mississippi River and there's Gulfport, Illinois and there's basically nothing there but this club. I remember crossing the river there's this pretty good sized club and it had the name of it was like a devil's way so you know right there you know it's like oh, okay so we go in there we meet Will. Everything's okay. He says, "Yeah, you're gonna, you can stay with me. You're gonna crash at my place, and t tomorrow we'll we'll talk some more." So that night we hang out there at the club because we got there kind of late. It seemed like so maybe there was like two sets left, and and uh, Will's done. We talk. He says, "You know, follow me home." We go to his house. The next day, we talk a little bit more about what's going on, and we were all into it. You know, you know, I've got this house. I got this house gig. And then he says, but I've got to do a gig in uh, Gallup, New Mexico also. So we played two weeks at this club. We go to Gallup, New Mexico, and we're, we're, we're coming back. So we're, all, we're excited. Okay, you know, like we actually played two weeks first. We go to Gallup, New Mexico. We play two more weeks. Uh, you know, that's four weeks worth of work. And then we get back. Uh, and it's a long drive back from Gallup to Gulfport, Illinois. And so we come back, and I remember it was like kind of late at night, and we pull up to the club, and there's nothing there. There's not a car in the parking lot. It's like 
all the lights are out it's like there's something wrong here somewhere so will will says uh you know what tomorrow let's crash you know we, we, we've driven a long ways we've been on the road so Ogle talked to the club owner because he knew where the club owner lived. You know, he knew everything about the situation. So he he talks to the club owner, and basically the club closed. We were gone. The club owner never informed us while while we were in Gallup that uh, the club was closed. So we kind of hurry on back to uh, Burlington, Iowa, Gulf, Gulfport, Illinois. No house gig. That was the end of it. And like all things, again, like I said, uh, things kind of fizzle out after a while. This ban only lasted maybe a couple more months, and that was the end of it. And I was back to the drawing board looking for more work. And such is the life of a musician. But I loved every moment of it.